Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm your host, Terry Barr, and we're going to talk about credit cards today. Are you finding yourself using yours a little more than usual just because Gosh, times are are tough right now. Things are expensive and a credit card can be an easy way to do it. But should you? There's the big question. And joining us to talk about it today is Sarah Rathner. Sarah is our Pennywise friend and she is a personal finance expert with NerdWallet. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Terry. Always a pleasure to be here. Oh, we are so (laughs) grateful because, uh, yeah, Times are tough. And yeah. are you finding maybe credit card use is up? And yeah, does that include debt being up? Yeah, there's been a lot of news about that this week. Mm-hmm. Um, the Federal Reserve of New York released a quarterly report that found that credit card debt is up. Delinquencies are up compared to last quarter. So, yeah, this is definitely something that's top of mind for a lot of people. Okay. So we're going to dive into some of the things you can do. A couple of tips for people to try to keep themselves in a good standing and out of debt when using credit cards. Oh, dear. That first tip. How about this one? Don't spend as usual. Now, what does that mean, Sarah? So not only are the things that we buy all the time more expensive right now than they have been in the past, but also our spending habits have shifted pretty dramatically. At the start of the pandemic, we spent less time outside of the home. Uh, Many workers were able to work from home, so they cut out commuting costs, the cost of buying and maintaining a work wardrobe, things like that. And uh, we also were going out less and traveling less. A lot of that has come back. That means that spending has come back in a big way, but all of those things are more expensive than they were in 2019. So we're spending a lot more than we used to. And, and you can tell, I mean, when you go to say just the grocery store, for example, you buy three um, things and you just spent like $40. (laughs) Yeah. Where before it would have been maybe half that. So I get where that's where that credit card comes out and it becomes easy. But again, that first tip, don't spend as you usually do, at at least not right now. What about relying on your credit limit? Now that sounds scary if you're going to try to spend uh, just to to be able to, to pay your bills, but then that takes you to your credit limit. Yeah, you know, inflation has increased consumers' reliance on credit cards. Uh, NerdWallet's 2022 Consumer Credit Card Report found that 32% of credit card holders say that in the past year they've used a credit card to pay for essential purchases and have yet to pay that debt off, and that's because of inflation. So what do we do about that credit limit? Do we ignore it? Do we do we know it's there? What should we even think about when it comes to just knowing about your credit limit? Yeah, so one, you should find out what your credit limit is. You might not know. Uh, yeah. um, definitely check, uh, log into your credit card account, check your statement, just see what, what you're working with to start. And another good exercise, and this goes back to what we talked about, about don't spend as usual, is taking a hard look at your budget. You might look at your budget periodically, maybe once or twice a year. This is a great time to do it again because the cost of borrowing has gone up and because prices for all these different goods we buy has continued to go up. And just see if there are any easy trims you can make out of your budget so you can free up some cash. And that way, hopefully your credit card bills are lower. You're using less of that credit limit. But another good idea is if your credit card accounts are in good standing, call the credit card companies and find out if you'd be eligible for a credit limit increase. That sounds counterintuitive because it seems like it's permission to spend more money. I'm not giving you permission to spend more money. (laughs) Good. If you have a higher credit limit, but your spending remains the same, you're actually using less of that credit limit every month. And that's something that over time can really benefit your credit score. Okay. Wow. That's, that's interesting, but don't spend to the credit limit. I like that. That's yeah. So if you are faced with a very serious emergency and you have, you you don't have emergency savings or you've already depleted them paying for this emergency, your credit limit is a a source of backup emergency funding, which is why a higher credit limit can also be better. Um, But again, that's something that should be a last resort because credit card debt is very expensive. Yeah. Um, How about uh, don't carry a balance on the high interest cards you have? Yep. The average credit card interest rate is more than 16%. And some cards charge close to 30%, so almost double that. That can get really expensive 
really quickly. We're talking hundreds of dollars of interest per year, maybe even over a thousand dollars, depending on your balance. And there are things you can do if you have credit card debt right now to potentially lower the interest that you pay and save that money. So step one, if you have good to excellent credit, look into balance transfer credit cards. You can move your debt onto these new cards and be charged 0% APR for a long time, sometimes a year or more. That gives you a nice long time horizon to make monthly payments and hopefully pay your debt down completely before that promotion ends and the interest rate goes right back up again. But if you don't qualify for one of those cards, you can also look into a personal loan. Hmm. That's not going to be 0% interest, but if you qualify for good terms, you could potentially pay a lower interest rate than your credit card is charging. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a really important one. Yeah. Um, Okay. So we have uh, tip number four, avoid those late fees. Yep. Oh yeah. Nothing's worse than paying, uh, you know, a bunch of money just because you forgot to read your email. So, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, your first time paying late, a late fee could be around $30 and it is allowed to go up to $41 after that. So that's a, it's, it, you know, it might not be in your budget to have late fees like that on a regular basis, but not only that, um, if you, uh, pay more than 30 days late, then it can dramatically lower your credit score sometimes by around hundred points. Mm. And some cards charge what's called penalty APR, where if you make a late payment, they raise your interest rate for several months until you make on-time payments and almost prove yourself to the, to the lender. And then they'll lower your interest rate back down to normal levels. So Ooh. you're penalized in multiple ways. And you know, obviously things happen, life happens, maybe you're traveling, you're dealing with something more serious, you forget to check when your credit card bill is due. If you anticipate being late, call your lender, your credit card company beforehand, explain the situation. If you've been dealing with a financial emergency and they can either change your due date or even talk to you about different hardship programs or um, nonprofit credit counseling, things like that. Um, And if you've already made a late payment by accident, but it was your first time. Oftentimes you can call the credit card company, explain yourself and they'll waive the fee the first time. Again, it, it sounds like it's about keeping open communication to it rather yeah. than avoiding talking about what you're going through. Yeah. And honestly, a good way to pre- prevent yourself from dealing with this in the future is using uh, the tools that credit cards provide online and on their apps. And that means setting up alerts, email and text alerts that can tell you when your bill is due in the next few days. And that way you have that instant reminder. It's like having a personal assistant tell you what to do and you can log into your account and pay your bill. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I've added it to my calendar. You know, just, we schedule so many things the way it is it's on my calendar now. Yeah. You can, with many credit cards, you can actually uh, customize your due date. So if you find that it's hard to afford your bills because they're not lining up very well with your paychecks, you don't have enough cash in the bank. Mm -hmm. If you move your due date to perhaps right after you get paid, you can have more money available to pay that bill as well. And hopefully that makes it easier to pay on time. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. Thank you. And then finally, uh, tip number five is (laughs) avoid those cash advance. Oh, yes. Features that uh, often come with a credit card. Um, Yeah. So cash advance. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, cash advance is essentially uh, using your credit card at an ATM to withdraw cash, uh, much like you would do with a debit card. But instead right. of withdrawing cash from your checking account, you're withdrawing against your credit limit. So you're borrowing from your credit limit. And this can get very expensive very quickly because not only will you pay ATM fees and cash advance fees, but the interest begins to accrue the moment you take the money out. Unlike purchases on a credit card where it's the start of the billing cycle, you make a purchase, you're not going to be charged interest until the payment is after the payment due date, which could be a few weeks down the line. Right. So right. Um, so you have this grace period with purchases that you can sort of use your credit card to float purchases and then pay it off once a month. Mm-hmm. Not the case with cash advances. Oh. You will begin to be charged interest immediately. And it's often a higher interest rate than... Uh, what the card would normally charge for purchases. Oh, that's not good. Yes. So this is something to have in your back pocket for dire emergencies when you need cash right now. Uh, But keep your debit card on you too, just so you can withdraw cash from your checking account instead, because then you're only subject at most to maybe an ATM fee if you go out of network, but otherwise 
you know, no APR or anything like that. Absolutely. Wow. Five terrific tips. What would you say is the bottom line when it comes to, you know, really what we're dealing with in this current situation and people with their credit cards? Yeah, it's, you know, watching the news and, and hearing about this all the time, it can really make you feel like the sky is falling. And yeah. sometimes it is. And for some people, uh, it truly is a tremendously difficult time. And it's, it's been a difficult time. Uh, but it can also warp your perceptions as to how things are for you individually and for how your household is doing. So it's just important to keep in mind, you know, what's going on in your personal economy? How might it be affected by what's going on at large? And how might it not be affected? So really just you know, eyes on your own paper kind of thing and just yeah. make sure that um, you're financially healthy and strong. You have systems and savings in place to support you when times get tough. And that way, hopefully, if you're faced with an emergency, you can weather it. And I, I believe we talked about this at the very beginning of our conversation, just kind of knowing your budget. And I think that's something that it, it doesn't hurt to remind people to sit down and just kind of figure it all out and have it, as you said, on paper. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Rathner, you are terrific personal finance expert with NerdWallet. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And again, I'm your host, Terry Barr with the Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. And we will see you with another new episode next week, Thursday. Have a great day.